This is the Raising Gang. There are usually two people up in the air and several more uh, down in the street. And their job is to get the pieces from the street, put them in place, and usually stuff one or two bolts in the open holes, just enough to secure the members, and then they uh, lift up and set uh, the next piece. Uh, they are followed by the bolting gang and they of course fill all of the holes with bolts and they torque the bolts and it's a good idea to have a testing program to uh, manually check the torque on the bolts. The iron worker in the foreground is standing on a float, very very simple device, uh, easily manhandled and tied to the steel and this is very traditional. You'll see many, many floats in the building supporting the iron workers. In addition, the iron workers are tied off. They're wearing a harness and uh, safety uh, devi devices to prevent an accidental fall. The iron worker in the background is walking on metal pans, which are usually called Q-deck, and they are laid out across the floor beams as quickly as the steel is erected. Uh, that's also done as a safety feature. I included this photo. It's a fascinating photo, but it's a, a good picture of what not to do. Now, this iron worker is walking on not just the top flange of the steel, which he's called upon to do very often, but he is walking on the top of the shear connectors which is terrible a practice, and I can't imagine why he's even doing it. Uh, the only reason he might be doing it is that he knows he's tied off and he has that uh, fall protection, but the presence of the fall protection does not excuse a bad practice, and what he's doing is uh, really unforgivable. I'm not sure why the shear connectors appear here this could be a bay which has some kind of diagonal bracing and requires interaction uh, with the concrete. But whatever the need is, these shear connectors can be installed in the field. And traditionally, that's what's done. Never in the factory, which presents this uh, obvious avoidable hazard to the iron workers. Let me show you how this is traditionally done, at least in bridge construction. Here is a detail of the installation of the shear connectors. This uh, round shape is a ceramic ferrule. The iron worker inserts the stud or the shear connector inside this ferrule and brings it to the location where he wants to install it, and when he squeezes the trigger, an arc is generated that melts the surfaces and automatically plunges the stud into that molten pool, which is held in place by this ceramic ferrule. Afterwards, you need to break away the ferrule and dispose of it. Uh, that should be removed before you place the concrete. Now there are many other hardware devices which take advantage of this technology and allow you to install them uh, very, very quickly and effectively. We reached a point where the foundation wall is partially constructed and is under construction throughout the entire site. And you can see that the cranes within the site are now basically trapped inside the hole. This is the time when you need to shift the responsibility onto tower cranes. You assemble the tower cranes and when they are uh, completely assembled they will actually lift out all these other devices. 
tower cranes will now come into use. The crawler crane in the foreground has been used in the construction of the foundation and also in the early steel erection, but very quickly the steel will be out of his reach and the crane itself is going to be in the way. So tower cranes will be used to finish the project and on this project internally installed tower cranes will be used. They actually climb on the steel frame of the building and I'll show you exactly what that process is like. This photo shows the initial installation, the very start of the construction of the tower crane. You can see sections of the tower and the red frame uh, below is the bottom support. It's that bottom support which is actually attached to the four columns and will ride up in the building. Every time I see this photo I'm reminded of a praying mantis. After the couple have mated, the female turns around and bites off the male's head. And that's about what's taking place in this picture. After the crawler crane erected the tower crane, the tower crane turns around and literally bites off its head. So all of the boom is missing and the tower crane will continue to uh, devour this until it's broken into small elements and lifted out of the excavation.